Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, <clears throat> I thought I might film a little bit today, um, not knowing what today would hold. And I feel like I've gone into every either holiday or birthday or th just things <laughs> with a positive outlook. And then when the day hits, it just hurts. Um... Today stings. Today's a hard one. Um, didn't think it would be. It's just a cheesy holiday, but um, my wife and I love cheesy holidays. And um, yeah, just seeing everybody with their significant other, it's hard. I miss mine. She's the only Valentine I ever wanted. And obviously I have my beautiful kids who I asked and they said yes. <laughs> I really, really miss her today. In these last three or four days have been really tough mentally I'm just trying to hold it together for my kids for myself for my wife but I feel the need to have a huge breakdown I really feel the need um, Tonight, coincidentally, I signed up to share my story in the Bible study group is where you share everything. And I picked today on purpose because I knew today might be hard. And then I could just give my real story. No sugarcoating, no hiding anything. So that'll be later today. But as of right now, uh, this is really hard. I just miss her so much. This feeling is so strong. I just miss her so much. So for anyone who's grieving or their significant other is sick or gone, I'm with you today. One thing I've also decided to do today um, is just play Jenny's playlist that I made for her for her service. It's just all of our love songs, songs that make me think of her. And it's good. It's making me feel all the feels. I can't tell you how much I'm crying today, um, but I need to feel the feels. I need a big cry. I also have therapy tonight. That'll be good. And I have Bible study tonight, <clears throat> which will be good. Um, but I need to feel the feels today. I can't ignore them, deny them. I need to feel it. There's still people at school. Can we just talk about how gorgeous you look today? Yes. Are you joking me? You picked the best. Valentine's Day dress ever, and Auntie did your hair. Okay. How gorgeous you hey. look. Oh, where's your daddy? Ah! Where? Right there, daddy. I don't see a lizard. Right there on the light. Oh, a little baby lizard. Yeah, cute. Little cutie. You're my little lizard. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're so cute. I love you. So I'm about to log into therapy. Um, I showed how beautiful Winnie looked picking her up from school. I didn't show Ellis because he was with his friend at the park and they were all playing and there's too many kids. So, but he had a great day at school. Winnie had a great day at school. They're now at piano and dance class while I do therapy. And then they're gonna go to their auntie's house for dinner while I go to my Bible study group.
So I'm excited for therapy. I'm excited to talk about today and all the feelings. And I was thinking in the car how to make this a complete video because I feel like there's not going to be much. Um, and I felt like it's Valentine's Day. It's a perfect day to tell Jenny and I's love story. So I'm going to take notes um, before I film later tonight because our love story is long and <laughs> there's a lot of things in the past and stuff that I want to talk about, but I don't want to get it wrong. So I wish Jenny was here to make this with me. We always wanted to do it, but I'm going to make it because it's Valentine's Day and what better day to share our love story. So that'll come later. So until then, see you guys soon. Um, good morning. It's 5.15 on a Friday. It's the Friday after Valentine's Day. <laughs> I never filmed, um, our love story, um, because the rest of Valentine's Day was kind of hard. <laughs> um, and I think, um, I've <clears throat> put off filming our love story because it's, uh, it's hard, uh, to talk about such a, um, special love, um, and I knew, <clears throat> It would require me to um, open up her diary. Um, she has many, um, but she had one generic diary. And that one goes over relationships, um, uh, advice for the kids, advice for myself. But one of the joys to read was um, our love story. And typical Jenny, um, <sighs> sorry. Um, she's got all the details, stuff that I don't even remember. Um, I want this to be an uplifting video because <laughs> it's our love story. Um, but darn it, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I tried practicing and it's so hard, but it's so special. And I think it's very true for where my head has been at for the last week. It's been in a very um, sad place, not anger, just kind of, um, just broken. Um, I just, uh, I miss the love of my life. I miss her a lot. Um, and then re, uh, reading it, <sighs> just brings back a lot of, um, just wonderful memories, um, special times in our life. Um, so, um, it's hard, but I want to share it because it's beautiful. Um, so, I'm going to go back to my notes and Jenny's diary often in this video. So I make cut times when I'm reading or I read everything over and over so I could try to repeat it, but you know, I think when your love is so, um, intertwined with your friendship, it's hard to tell your love story because it's... <laughs> It just, it's also intertwined that I just, our love story is very long. Okay. So, um, 
I'm gonna do my best to get through this because I really wanna share it. Um, so I met Jenny, so I was um, just turning 17, like right around, I think I was 17. And Jenny was about to turn 21. She, so we have like a two and a half year difference. <clears throat> And um, I'll tell my memory and then I'll tell hers. Hers is so much better, I love it. So I, um, I worked at a grocery store across the street from my house off and on well, from the time I was 15 and a half. Um, and literally right across the street, I walked to work. It was, it was just across the street and um, I would work off and on because I had football and so the manager there would let me take time away from work when I was in season and then I would go back when season was over. Amazing boss who let me do that. Um, so I would always have these periods where I'd go off and come back on. One of the times where I was about to come, you know, sign back on to work I went in a few days before to, you know, say hi to the people that were there. I had a lot of friends there um, that I worked with. And so I came in to say hello to my buddies. And I was with my girlfriend at the time, who, you know, when you're 16, 17 years old, you feel like that's the, you know, she was my first girlfriend, my first kiss, my first love, I thought so. But now looking back, I, you know, we were never in love. We were just 16 and 17 year olds. Um, so I brought my girlfriend in and trying to, you know, just show off, be very like, what's up everybody, Kyle's back. Came in and um, bought, you know, something stupid, something you didn't need, candy, I don't even remember. <clears throat> And I, um, I said, what up, to one of my good friends at work. He was the bag boy, and then there was a checker. And so I went through the line, and the checker um, was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I had my girlfriend next to me. Um, most stunning, beautiful, gorgeous person. <sighs> okay. So, that's, that's mine, okay? Uh, Jenny was in her, <laughs> what she wrote, um, She was working, she was living where we live now, and she was commuting all the way to Orange County where she eventually got a job. Or no, okay, so she was living in Orange County, but still commuting out here in the Inland Empire because she was working at a Target that's pretty close to where she used to live. But they were uh, living in Orange County because her best friend Melanie was going to school at um, one of the colleges there. Anyway. Um, I guess Ashley, Jenny's sister, without Jenny knowing, applied for Jenny to work at that Vons that was across the street from my house because they thought it was so silly that Jenny was still commuting. And now that I know my wife, of course she still commuted. She was, she loved her uh, routines. She loved the safety of a place. She was really good at her job at Target from what Jenny has told me, so like she didn't want to lose what she already had. But she got a call for an interview from Vons and she was like, what the heck is this? And Ashley said, I, I applied for you, go to the interview and get that job. And so Jenny did and they loved her and they hired her on the spot. So she started randomly working at this Brea Vons, the one that I had 
gone back and forth working the last you know year and a half and then um so then she was had started working right before i came back and then as she says um one night um i walked in and i had my girlfriend in at the time and she wrote down that i was wearing my blue stussy hoodie which i totally forgot but i had this bright blue sweatshirt that just stood out man and um apparently she remembered that um and she wrote that um i was very like what up everybody do 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 and uh that's very me and it's <laughs> funny that she remembers that um and she had a coworker there that she had become friends with and he was one of my friends and she noted here that he like rarely he was a very serious kind of guy and he never really lit up and he lit up when he saw me so that told her like oh this guy must be a good dude i'll uh, take notice so then i came through her register and she wrote that she and she told me this all the time she thought i was this like jock you know, partier guy that partied on the weekends with his girlfriend and this is his like seventh girlfriend and blah blah blah. <laughs> um, I was not that at all, as we all later found out, but um, she wrote that he was a popular jock. I was. I played football in high school and in college, um, so I had that kind of demeanor, but um, she wrote that she discovered that I wasn't the typical jock like jerk kind of <laughs> behavior um but then we started working together um and i remember this very well um we were both shy around each other didn't say much and i was a very serious worker at work you know trying to bah, 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 go as fast as i could and she was really good at working too and um then one day she cracked a joke and she wrote in here she was trying to see if I would bite and I bit man um, and we just uh, we just clicked um, we just thought all the same things were funny and laughed at the same jokes and just uh, I know now looking back as a 34 year old I fell in love the second the second I met Jen the second that I saw her, um, and I know most people will tell you that I, I loved her from the second I met her, man. Um, truly a gem of a person, absolutely stunning, uh, kind, just all the above. So, um, then we became like besties, you know, we would talk all the time at work. We almost got, we got in trouble sometimes for talking too much at work and, um, we just got so close. And then when we got, re we got so close when one of our coworkers who was around our age was spreading a, a lie about her. Um, and it, to me, I didn't know the situation. I just knew Jenny very well already at that point. And I was like, that doesn't sound like Jenny. So I, you know, rather than like get into the gossip, I went and took her aside and I said, hey, so-and-so is saying this, but I know it's not true and I just thought you should know. And um, so she confronted that person and she was so thankful for me for telling her and she wrote it here and I remember, I think I might still have it, I should look for it, but she drew me a picture that day and it was her and I in like a field with a rainbow and it said besties up on the top and I've never heard that term until then. And that's when I made my true soul best friend. Um, someone you tell everything to, anything to. She never made me feel embarrassed about anything. She made me feel confident in everything I did, everything I said. Um, yeah. So we were, became even closer, we became besties. Um, just absolute best friends. Um, 
We would spend uh, long hours talking after work. Uh, we connected on so many different levels um, with different things in our life and our situations that were very similar. Our family dynamic, just um, we just connected on every level. And um, when I met her, she had a, a serious boyfriend um, and I had my girlfriend. And then she was on a, a break from this boyfriend, which they had taken a couple, now that I read her love story. Um, and we talked about this, but it gets all muddled. But she was on a break. They were, like, taking a break, and he explored other options, and she was, you know. And um, so we just got so close, connected on so many different levels, and then um, she and her serious boyfriend got back together, and tried to make things work and we of course stayed very best friends and then I broke up with my girlfriend correction my girlfriend broke up with me <laughs> um, I remember being so devastated when she broke up with me I thought that was it and and Jenny was like it's gonna be okay I promise it's fine <laughs> and um, so then I was single Jenny was in her relationship and we were so close I mean we we um, she introduced me to her um, family and friends and we were just, and I introduced her to my family and my friends and we were just besties, right? Um, and we connected on so many, so many different levels. Um, just, it was perfect. Um, then, um, oh, backtracking, I forgot, after the co-worker made her feel sad and then I kind of protected her we walked out that night um, doing our usual like goodbye and I said you know I see people text you <laughs> and I want to be I want to be one of those people that text you how do I do that <laughs> can I have your number and she wrote here like yes you can text me if you want good one Kyle <laughs> um, that was my smooth way to be able to talk to Jen more, not just at work, after work, but uh, all day. Because I needed to, I needed to hear her voice, I needed to text her, I needed to be around her, I needed to be close to her. Um, she was my everything from the minute I met her. Um, so we started texting as friends, um, we just clicked, and um, she wrote here, we're both silly, we're both passionate, we're both caring, and we're both considerate. So we just clicked on so many different levels. It just made it, it just made it so easy. Everything. Um, so we were friends for years. Um, as we dated other people off and on. Um, and... Um, Then, but we secretly crushed on each other, right? We both, um, deep in our hearts, she told me and I've told her that during the whole time of us being best friends and besties, we secretly crushed on each other. I don't know if mine was a secret, but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, we just absolutely crushed on each other. During one of her breakups with that serious boyfriend, they had gone off again. Um, her and I had our first kiss. And this was at like a work party or something. And um, everybody got together and um, we had our first kiss. And when I tell you sparks fly and all the magic and all the bells and whistles, man, I'll never forget. Uh, I'll never forget that night ever. Um, it's engraved in my brain. Um, first kiss was magical. It was like the friendship and all the connection and everything. And then now, you know, the kiss, uh, it was just, um, perfect. Um, then, um, I remember the next day we had work and friends were going to hang out and I wanted to make it awkward and like, uh, -oh, we kissed like our friendship's over. I'm never going to talk to Jen again. So I was very awkward the next day. And she's told me this and she wrote it, but she would not let that happen. She was like, it's okay that we kissed. 
It doesn't mean our friendship has to be over. It doesn't mean we need to be committed dating. Like, just slow down, relax. We just had, um, you know, a romantic kiss and it doesn't have to mean anything where it can. Um, so we stayed friends. Um, we, um, we just weren't ready at that point in our life to be in a relationship. We now look back, or we used to look back and say I wish we were, because we were meant to be together from the moment we met, but I was still young, and she wanted me to like go date and explore the world, which I wasn't interested in, but, um, and she was now going to try to get back with that serious boyfriend, who she really loved. They were going to try to work things out again. Um, they had tried exploring other options or whatever, and they ended up wanting to be together so her and I kind of decided let's just be the best of friends let's just be around each other at all times but let's just be friends and we both agreed and it was really hard to be honest and I told Jenny many times and she understood that it was hard to be her friend I was in love with her <laughs> and I was so attracted to her and um and there was even a time where I said, I can't be your friend anymore. I'm, I, it's too hard for me. And she was really broken. Um, and I remember telling her, like, I just can't do it. And um, especially if I'm dating other girls, like, I just can't. And she was like, I understand, but it was so hard. I think I lasted maybe a week. I don't know. She didn't write it down. Maybe a week without talking to her, not even until I caved and said, I can't do this. I have to be in your life. I will be your best friend until the, the day we both die. If that's all that that means, perfect. And I truly accepted it in my heart. I, I remember telling my friends, like, it's just not meant to be. She has someone she's in love with. They're working on their relationship. They're having a good thing. I need to just accept the fact that she's gonna be my best friend forever. And I will always love her. And I accepted it, and I, you know, I made that decision, and Jen made that decision. And then, um, we, we, you know, we went back to being best friends and doing best friend things and going to concerts. She'd go to my football games, and um, we just loved the heck out of each other. Um, and then, um, man, I loved her so much. Then, uh... Her and this guy uh, were just not, you know, it had been some time now, a good amount of time, and and they their relationship started to kind of naturally distance a little bit, and um, she would come to me and say, what do you think's going on? Why do you think he's distancing himself and doing A, B, and C? And I was like, well, I think maybe you guys need to have a talk. Maybe it's not working out or whatever. And she was like, yeah, and... Months went by and then finally he left her. Um, he had met someone else and just didn't want to be in a relationship with Jen anymore. <coughs> and, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, when she called me and told me, my first thought is, yes, <laughs> I can finally be in a relationship with my best friend. Um, but I knew that's the last thing she needed at that time. Um, so she wrote down here, which makes me so happy, that um, she needed that time after they broke up to heal. And from what I remember and what she wrote down, I spent every single day with her. Um, and I never ever tried to push anything further than friends. I just wanted to be there for my best friend. She was really hurting, really struggling, really sad, really broken, and I knew the last thing she needed was for a guy to come say, now it's my turn. Um, so I just wanted to be there and support her and love her. And so, um, you know, I remember buying her favorite candies and um, just listening to her talks and walking her dogs with her. And um, we'd go on friend dates and, um, We'd tell each other everything, and it was a magical time. It really was. Um, yeah.
I helped her get a new job. I was working at Party City and um, I knew one of the higher up people and I asked them, you know, Jenny wanted to kind of do a little revamp of her life at that point and so I got her a job at Party City as one of the managers because I knew someone. And um, we just connected on, on so many levels at that point and then uh, she wrote down here that she knew but she didn't want to rush anything. Um, that she was going to marry me at that point. Um, but neither of us wanted to rush and ruin it because we knew this was probably going to be our partner forever. So, and keep in mind, I don't know if any of this makes sense, so I'm going to go back and watch it because I'm just rambling, but... Then, um, one night, I got off of work late. She got off before me, and... She baked cupcakes and they said on them, will you be my boyfriend? And she hid um, in her house behind these like folding doors in the kitchen and set up the cupcakes lit on the table with like flower petals. And she was wearing the most beautiful dress. And I got home and I'm like, what's going on? It's like dark and I see it glowing and I open it and I see on the table it says, will you be my boyfriend? And she wrote down here that she had to be ready. Um, and I was so happy that she was, man. I was so happy. Um, and I read the cupcakes and I had to ask her. I asked her like four times, are you serious? Are you serious? Like, are you serious? And she was embarrassed and shy and she wrote down here that she almost backed out because she was embarrassed. She thought I was too corny or whatever, and I'm so glad she didn't. And she had her computer open playing some soft music. Well, I don't remember. And I ran over to the computer. I gave her a huge hug. I lifted her up the ground, and I said, hold on. And I typed in Celebrate by Cool in the Gang. <laughs> and that song played really loud, and her parents were listening in the other room, and... I just remember, uh, that being the happiest day of my life, uh, God. she wrote down the date here, I didn't remember that, but September 16th, 2012, um, Um, so I'm sure I messed up the dates at the beginning of this, but, um, yeah, it must have been. I don't know why I said, anyway, 2012. So we started dating and we knew right then, um, you know, I think I was what, 20, I was 22, 22 and she had to be 24. And uh, we knew, like, okay, this is who I'm going to marry. I, I already know this is my best friend. This is my love. This is my everything. This is my beauty. This is my, this is it. I've made it. But um, we didn't know how fast you're supposed to do that, but I didn't care. Um, it wasn't long after we were dating that I decided to propose. Um, we had just moved out together officially, and so I was like, let's let's do everything so we moved out I had a job where we could get an apartment um, we lived on our own Jenny was so scared to live with me for the first time and live with a boy and um, <laughs> we were so nervous but um, so then I proposed right away I planned uh, which I'll put a link in here Jenny actually uploaded on a different channel but um, if you haven't seen our proposal it's on YouTube and I'll link it um, but I got together some of our closest family and friends and asked them if they would do a choreographed dance with me. I made a slideshow um, of all the pictures of our relationship. I filled the place with balloons with our pictures attached to them. I got some of the prettiest flowers. Um, and um, really funny, Jenny wrote in here that the morning of the proposal, um, I was talking to her dad very early in the morning, and um, Jenny overheard um, 
what we were talking about. So she knew that I was going to propose that day. Um, and she had told me that later on in life. And she felt so bad that she knew. But she didn't know all the things I was planning. She just knew I was going to pop the question. Um, but it's really funny that she knew. She felt so guilty. But um, I dressed up our dogs at the time for their proposal. One in a wedding dress, one in a tuxedo. I had friends there. We had glitter everywhere. Balloons everywhere. I had a big Cinderella castle. Um, it, it was gorgeous. And um, we all did the dance for her. I bought her Cinderella like slipper heels. Um, I wanted it to be perfect. She was so gorgeous. Um, and of course she said yes. And one thing that got me that she wrote over and over that she was writing to me and to the kids is that um, some people have said um, that you won't feel a difference when you're engaged when you're you know, when and when you're married and we felt such a difference we loved being engaged we loved being married and Jenny wrote in here that she never had a boy want to commit a man want to commit their whole life to them and she said it it was a dream to have me want to commit to her for the rest of my life and um she wrote in here over and over and I we used to say it all the time that we really, really loved our relationship. We really loved marriage. Just so much. Um, we loved every bit of it. Um, so, we wanted to get married soon. We planned a double wedding with her sister. Um, so we got married on the same day. We had a huge wedding party because it was two different sets of people getting married. Um, there's a link to that too, some of you have seen, but, um, and, um, what a beautiful day. Jenny didn't really want to marry a big, uh, wedding day, but she did it for me, because <laughs> I wanted one. Um, but, um, you know, we say all the time to our kids, and it, it's important when you find a love to find someone who's your best friend. Um, and I don't think a lot of people are lucky enough to find that, but, um, the love that we had and have was so deep. Um, and you can ask anyone close to us, it was so, so deep. Um, I truly, uh, I know that she's my soulmate. I know it. So it makes all of this really extra hard um because it's like well you lose your soulmate at 33 what are you supposed to do now um but um some of the de i know i'm missing details um but we you know we loved being friends we loved dating we loved being engaged we loved marriage um, and funny story is Jenny didn't want kids when we got married. She had said, nope, I don't want them. And I was like struggling with that because I wanted kids. And I said, that's fine. If you don't want them, I don't want them. Anything you want, I want. And then one day we were at the mall shopping and she saw a little boy crying and helped him back to his mom. And she looked at me and she said, I want a baby. <laughs> I was like, no, you don't. She said, I want a baby. And so we then had Ellis soon after. Um, but our love got stronger with parenting, with marriage, with our miscarriage, with our, with our second child, Winnie. Um, every time we hit a milestone, we just got stronger. And if I could just explain to you how much we loved each other, it's hard to do. Which is why I've avoided the love story, because I feel like I can never do it justice. But I hope you can get the sense of how intertwined our souls are and will be. Um, the amount of sparks that we felt on a daily basis was pretty incredible. Even on the most boring of days, we always felt it. 
she wrote that over and over and over in here. Um, but one thing that I can say that I am proud of is that she wrote over in here, not knowing she wouldn't be here, how much of a dream life she felt that she had. Um, she talked about our honeymoon and how nervous and scared we were, but how special that was, how she got sick on her honeymoon. And she asked me that night, which I shared at the service. They say that the honeymoon is a representation of the marriage, Kyle. What does that mean for us? Does that mean I'm going to be sick and you're going to take care of me? And I just gave her a light kiss on the forehead and said, I will gladly take care of her. No matter what. Um, and here we are. Um, but our love was very friendship based first, which made for, I think, a perfect marriage. Um, we always made sure to communicate everything. Um, if any of us, if either of us got our feelings hurt, we said it. We never played games. And um, love uh, was so easy with her. Love was so easy with her. I didn't, I don't know any different. Because I met her when I was 16, 17, and here I am at 34. That's 18 years of my life. Or whatever, 19, I don't know. She's all I've known. In a friendship, in love, marriage, relationship. So. Best friends, met at a grocery store, supported each other, dating other people. Then realizing we were meant to be. Then her taking her time healing. And then asking me to be her boyfriend. Then I propose. Then we're lucky enough to get marriage. And then we got... Uh, Let's see, we got married in, when did we get married, 2014? So 2014 to 2020 was six years, and then 2023, so nine years. So this coming, 2024, we're coming up on our 10 year wedding anniversary. Wow. So, I'm sorry that this was not um, as flowery and rainbows as it could have been. Um, but the, um, the love that I feel for my wife um, is so deep and so on another level. It's hard to explain. But just know that um, if you know anything about our love, it was pure and um, it was so true. And if you can, for, for my kids and for anyone looking for a relationship, find someone who's your friend first. Um, it's pretty amazing. And just treat them like a million bucks because you never know. Um, we wanted to grow so old together. We'd see old couples on the street holding hands and we'd say, there's us. So. That's our love story. I know I didn't do it justice. I know it, but, um, just hopefully you take away that she's so stinking perfect. Such an amazing love. Um, I love her so much to this day. I'm so grateful for the love that she gave me. Um, I'm so eternally grateful for that love. I'm so grateful for us being put in, in our lives together. Grateful for her wanting to have kids. Being the best mom on the planet. 
And I'm grateful for her being my best friend. It cut off, sorry, I'm talking too much. I'm grateful for her being my best friend. I'm grateful for the love that we have and that we will have for eternity. I'm so grateful. So happy Valentine's Day, my love. I know I didn't do it justice, but I love you. I miss you. Um, I love you. Happy Valentine's Day. You are my true love, my everything, my soulmate, and I love you.